In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this Stranger Things animation in Blender. I'll outline loads of techniques you can use that work for animation or for awesome renders like this. First I added a plane for the floor, then I modeled the door by adding a plane, then using loop cuts to create the wooden cross pieces and indenting and deleting where the glass panes go. This could all be extruded before adding some shape to the cross pieces. A mirror modifier was used and applied to create both sides of the door. For the door frame I duplicated the edge loop, separating by selection and extruding it. Nothing has absolute sharp edges so remember to add a bevel modifier. Once happy with the design, I added more loop cuts all over the mesh so I could add imperfections. Using proportional editing is great for this, just moving the mesh about to make it more irregular and real. I set the origin to one side of the door so it can be animated. I then marked some seams where it wouldn't be noticeable and UV unwrapped it ready for texturing. And repeat this for the door frame. I used assets mainly from the website Polygon, and ones exported from Substance Painter, but you can use whatever free choice you prefer. For the door wood material, I created two shader setups of different levels of damaged wood. These were put into a mix shader, which then used a noise texture setup to blend between these textures. I also combined the displacement maps using a mix RGB node that uses the same noise texture to mask between them. Then that mix shader went into a new mix shader, combined with a simple white diffuse material, which then used a scratch imperfection image to create light scratches. Finally I copied one of the wood materials and made it darker using a hue saturation node to create a dirt layer. I then texture painted where this dirt would likely go using a textured brush, and then used this image as a mask in the mix shader to add the dirt layer. This overall created our textured door. For the floor I added a basic tile texture from Polygon. Now we can start the animation. I set up the camera to push in on the door, adding some camera roll as this is commonly used in Stranger Things and helps give an uneasy feeling to the shot. I animated the door to take a couple of hits before flying open. Because of the origin location, I could just rotate the object. Test the animation until it looks right. I then used layers of noise modifiers on the camera animation curves to add some shape. This is to create larger and smaller movement variations. So just experiment with the scale, size and offset to find a curve shape that works. You can even use the restrict frame range setting to add noise in specific places. I added small vibrations each time the door was hit. For the animation, I actually created this at 30 FPS. As it was a vertical video, I was hoping to get the effect like it could have been recorded on someone's phone to make it all feel real, which in the end I thought worked well. Now to set up the lighting, I added a plane that fits around the door and stretches upwards to separate the different lighting, adding a white light for the foreground and a strong red light in the background. Then to get the effect of the floor continuing backwards, first in render properties, under film, tick transparent, and also transparent glass for later. On the plane, in object properties, tick holdout, and this will render this area as fully transparent, separating the foreground and background lighting without the plane being visible. We can later render the floor behind the door with only the white lighting, using another holdout plane to only render where needed, which we can then layer under the main render in compositing. This creates the portal effect into the upside down, so that the red lighting only appears through the door. Next was creating the atmosphere. This simply used a box with a volume scatter shader, controlled by a noise texture and a color ramp. Then with a mapping setup attached, you can animate the location to create moving mist. I added these in the foreground and background, and you can even add multiple of different noise sizes to layer them up. This is where you can experiment with lighting and the mist density to find a look you like. In the end I rendered out the foreground mist separately so I could adjust the intensity in compositing. Now that I had some lighting and atmosphere behind the door, I can now texture the glass. This was a single plane parented to the door. This simply used a principal BSDF with transmission at 1 to create the base glass. Then using mix shaders, I used image textures as masks, such as here to add roughness smudges. I then repeated this to add dirt imperfections, before adding a final texture painted layer of dirt build up around the frame for added realism. I'm in the process of creating a more in-depth tutorial for how I create glass, with imperfections, that'll walk you through step by step, so to not miss it, hit subscribe, or check out some of my other tutorials. To create the roots, I stretched a cylinder and added plenty of loop cuts. I then moved the ends into a point. Using a displace modifier with a musgrave texture, I was able to create a more organic shape. I laid a second one on top of this, then apply the modifiers to create the mesh. Anywhere the mesh overlaps that may be quite visible, you can sculpt into the exact shape you want. I then marked a seam along the underside and UV unwrapped it. To texture the vines, it was combining two textures. One was an organic slimy looking material that I duplicated with slightly different hue, saturation and values, and mixed together using a musgrave texture. I then mixed in the second texture which was a ground texture with lots of roots, again mixed in with the musgrave texture. I also combined the displacement maps with mixed RGB nodes. Experiment with the strength of the displacements, as the roots in this material worked really well to add a natural feel to the vines. Then to animate these, I put the origin at one end and made sure it was at the world centre. Then add a bezier curve. and keep 
keeping its origin in the same place. In edit mode, create a path for the root to follow, then add a curve modifier to the root object, selecting the curve and finding the right deform axis. Then, by moving the root along its length in world space, it moves along the curve. So, add location keyframes to the root at the start and end points, and it's done. Just duplicate this object and curve and repeat this process, scaling the object to different sizes and offsetting the animations, and setting the path to go along the floor, up the walls, or wrapping around things. Just remember to keep all of the origins in the same place. The holdout plane for this scene also hides the vine behind the door maintaining the portal effect. Now the way I created the Vecna inspired character was I found this model on Mixamo that was vaguely similar and had a good texture. Then I simply sculpted it into a more Vecna like shape, then adjusted the bones to fit that new shape. Adjusting the hands wasn't even sculpting, I just scaled the bones. The character would mostly be in silhouette so not much detail was needed, and the texture itself does most of the job. The eyes were quite prominent still, so I just texture painted a mask and shifted a duplicated texture to create a blank face. I wasn't too concerned about 100% Vecna accuracy. It kind of ended up as a Vecna Demogorgon hybrid, but as long as it looked creepy, that was good enough. Then to add a bit of life, I added a noise to the bone rotations, copying from one to another and adjusting the offset and strength to create some varying movement. Now I'm really sorry to say but the smoke sim at the bottom I actually made in Houdini as I learnt Houdini instead for smoke sims. I imported it as an open VDB and added a volume shader to make it dense and red. This is however a subtle effect that isn't necessarily needed for the shot to work. If you're new to volumetrics, I highly recommend researching open VDBs. Even though I made this one in Houdini, you can download or buy amazing smoke, fire, explosions, clouds, anything volume based that others have made and bring it into your project as an open VDB. Or you can use the smoke simulation inside of Blender. I sent glowing particles across the scene using a particle sim on a plane, placed to the side of the shot. I created a collection of randomly shaped subdivided planes with a slightly different emission color on each. These were put into a collection and you can select that collection and pick random. I made sure to add rotation and use any randomness settings there were. I then used wind forces to send them in the right direction and to keep them off of the floor and added turbulence forces to randomize the movement. This is just a lot of trial and error, changing the forces and particle settings to find what works for your scene. I duplicated this setup with slightly more particle speed for the background. This is a quick method to add more complexity and atmosphere to your scene, especially once motion blur and depth of field are added. I then rendered out multiple passes of the scene. First was the door, roots, floor and the smoke. Second was just the floor behind the door to layer underneath. Then I rendered the scene inside the door, using the wall holdout to isolate just this area, where it then fit in behind the door. Then finally, I added the foreground particles and the atmosphere on top, adding some slight color adjustments. And with some essential sound design, we have our final scene. <laughs> We recently hit over a thousand subscribers, so I'd like to thank you so much for all of the support you've given the channel. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.